So I finally climbed out my pit. Just drinking the coffee I just made. Pretty much all the clothing I've got, barring my waterproof jacket, which is down the other end of my hammock. It's tied around my hammock. Stop a little bit of wind coming through the end of the just underneath. That's the way the wind was coming. Just passing the coldest hour of the morning. I'm about to leave the camera on. Just running, right? Not on record, just on standby. Uh, just to keep the camera warm because it warms itself. I've got the sticky foot warmers stuck to the bottom of my socks, up on my toes in my boots. Like I say, I've got winter weight, uh, they're crag offers, winter trousers, so they're lined. Been quite nice, it's like a quilty lining. Seems my uh, 12 volt battery that runs the camera is uh, being affected by this cold as well. I've got the small battery that comes with the camera that's uh, partly charged that I can use. Not quite sure how long rolling time we're going to have now. DD XL tarp really works well like this. It's got five guy points along each side. And it's 4.5 metres long uh, by three. Like I say, I've got it about a foot off the ground. Could have had it the other way and had it pegged right to the ground, but you couldn't have any doors then. Kind of like it with the doors, especially when there's a lot of wind. And it retains a certain amount of heat. I wouldn't say it retains loads, but... Does retain a bit. I was kind of skeptical at how warm I was going to be with just my summer under blanket. Um, it's my half under blanket, half length. Um, with just that blow up mat and the jacket I've got on now, it's a Montane Extreme Smock. I had that under from my mid thigh down to my calf and then my feet were on the actual mat uh, and obviously in my down bag with my tent boots on and it worked really well I think before in these kind of temperatures I've had a down a full length down quilt underneath and, uh, two season sleeping bag with a wool blanket over the top and I was toasty warm now but or then but now it's yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely worked and the compression I can get all my kit easily in a 40 litre bag I'd say a 40 litre bag as long as I have to take this smock off because this takes up a lot of room you don't want to compress it too much it ruins the um, pile Plus I've got my camera, my camera battery, um, and that is like a three litre thing on itself. It takes up about the space of three litres. It's heavy, it's bulky, um, quite a lot of wires. It can be annoying, but it helps run the camera. The battery can run the camera for 24 hours, constant on record. Um, you can't really complain. I'd rather carry the weight of that and be able to record when I want, how I want, than uh, worry about a 40 minute little tiny camera battery.
that craps out in the cold. I'm having to take it off and put it in my pocket to work. Just wanted to show you a few of the things um, that I brought with me. The light I used last night for filming was this. It's a strip light. That's for a laptop. They're LEDs, but I mean they're cheapy ones, but they work so well. And being LED, they don't drain a lot of power. Um, it being a USB connection, I've got a USB connection on the um, camera battery setup. This also means I can charge my phone battery. Uh, also means. I don't know if you guys have seen these yet, uh, Duracell phone chargers. Um, these are great. It doesn't give my phone a lot of life. Um, I would say 35 to 40 percent extra, which is a, a lot um, for a smartphone of that kind of power. Um, yeah, which you know it, it does the job. Emergency is definitely good. Um, yeah, I've, I think it's a really good little buy, and it's really cheap as well. A couple of them, and it's sorted. Um, one thing that the Pizza igniter on the jet boil always craps out on me in the cold, um, and I kind of pack this. This has been my uh, my go-to thing, my little turbo flame I think they're called. It's one of the first models. You can see all the paint's flecked off and I've had it for years now. Um, again, it is affected by the cold. I won't lie, because it's been hanging above it. Um, but what I've learned is a minute held clutched in your palm to warm up and it works straight away. Um, you know, it's that thing of uh, use what works. So I just thought I'd show you that. It's a nifty little thing if uh, you've got a way of taking stuff like that out. Strip lighting is great for filming. Another thing that I've got, which I haven't had to use yet. Um, I've wanted one for ages but just never got round to go into the shop to get one. Um, this is my toilet pack. It's compact. It's got a little lighter. Compact toilet roll. Andrex one. Uh, a BCB. Steridex for the hands. And then uh, this a little hand trowel. Um, it's great, it's a fantastic bit of kit. The one I used to have, um, the handle used to bend, come out of the um, snap. And it's cut me plenty of times because it was all sharp or it'd pinch the skin and uh, nick you and make you bleed that way. Uh, it's not a good thing when you're doing that. Uh, uh, toilet your duties. So yeah, it's hardened aluminium, I think. I'm not sure on the specs. It weighs nothing and that's the, the point. It locks out with the little studded button there. There's a little compartment here I can't undo it because I've got gloves on and my hands are freezing. Um, but that's hollow in there. Now it's not long enough to fit a Steridex in there. You can fit a lighter in there. In fact, I might put my... No, I won't because I won't be able to get it out. Um, it is quite hard to open it, hence the reason I put this little bit of paracord on there. Um, my toilet roll won't go in there. 
maybe had a stash, a smaller roll of toilet roll I've got in there as an emergency backup. Um, but the whole unit is just superb. It's made by Cedar Summit, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Um, it's called the iPood. Um, there's a couple of other, I think they brought it out again, branded it a different name because people didn't like the iPood part. There we go. The iPood. Oh, I see the summit. You get this little seal nylon bag as well. Again, well lightweight. Like the not lightweight stuff sacks that don't have to take a braving and stuff. It's great. Okay, it's a little compact unit there. That's what I call a toiletry pack. Um, obviously, I've got my wash kit and stuff. There you go. It's just in this um, really thick. It's what I use to heat seal, shrink wrap my kit. Um, it's got my little hand towel. It's got my wash kit pouch. I've had this for years now. Um, it's a great little pouch, it served me well. So it zip opens up and I fit a little hook on mine. Um, I've changed the mirror to a, a non-breaking mirror, which has corroded a little bit there. Um, but I've got the essentials. And that's what matters. So I did have this little thin bit of toilet roll. I might put that in there. And just for reference, it's the Andrex um, on the go roll. You can generally find these um, in supermarkets, the big ones, Tesco's um, and Morrison's. A lot of them have stopped doing them now, which is a pain in the backside. Um, quite lucky to have bought the amount I did when I did. So I think hygiene really important when you're out. Just as important it is when you're indoors. Not necessarily keeping your hands clean. keeping your body clean, uh, especially over the two day mark, and keeping your mouth clean, brushing your teeth and being you know, able to clean out your nails and stuff like that, um, you can harbour a lot of bacteria depending on what task you're doing. Uh, and I'm not an avid hand washer, especially when I'm outdoors, um, because you know I've been brought up with dirt, and uh, it's never harmed me, but it is good to wash your hands before food and stuff like that. Right, let's get out and show you about. One of the joys of camping out in the woods is that you wake up in the woods and you're already there, you're immersed with nature. You wake up to the sound of bird song. Um, and like me, early hours, um, between five and half six, the hours are going. I thought there'd be a little more wildlife, but uh, I was mistaken. Got a little stream running down the end. So down there, a stream under loads of bramble. This place was also on top of World War II caves and there's tons of sinkholes down to it and there's one of them and there's a few more over there quite dangerous but fun when you're a kid so let's just show you 
the tarp. So it's 4.5 long, plenty long enough to uh, engross my hammock. Um, my hammock's very long, quite wide. The doors not totally sealed up, you see it overlapping. And there's not even a gap where the string's going in. Whoopy slings. I've got the doors tied on with elastic shot cord. Just got the figure nine there, and on the other side, I've got shot cord with a little shot cord clip. At the moment, I've just got it. See, these are the clips I've got. I've got one of these in a figure nine. So I can just hold the doors open. See there. It's pretty much the setup. Jet ball, my rucksack, um, which held out well, which I'll show you soon. My little makeshift camera battery insert. Uh, I keep this in an army respirator pouch. I just made that a foam mat. It's all different compartments for the battery and wires and stuff. Uh, it's also rubbish. All in one bag. Just keep it all together. As you can see everything else either hanging up or in my hammock. Just flipped the tarp over. Uh, just want to show you what I did with the mat. Normally, my feet slip off the mat quite a bit. Um, what's handy is obviously the end of each sleeping bag, you get a loop. Just to make sure it doesn't touch the ground. Um, and the mat's got two little loops, and this comes on the bigger mat. And like I say, this is a sample one. Very interesting way of They've glued the insulating material on the top and bottom so that when it crushes, it crushes down, but when it springs up, it opens it all back out. Um, very, very clever design. Flat air valves. Um, kind of takes away the thing of air, the valves breaking and stuff like on the firm rests. So I've put this on. Uh, like that, so when my feet are in there, the mat don't slide like that. It stays on there um, and just moves around in my hammock where I put my feet, which worked out very well. So I've normally bungee cord on the end of this and tied it to my hammock for my actual sleeping bag but uh, only when I'm using it as a top quilt. So the bag itself So it's rated down to minus one. Um, so it had a good fill power for the price. And I've been very impressed. Best thing is that it, this weighs nothing. Um, for the equivalent synthetic bag, you're looking at um, like the two kilogram, two and a half kilogram mark for weight um, and for compact compactability this goes right down um, I haven't got a stuff sack for it it didn't come with one um, not a compression type it just come with a normal stuff sack uh, a cylindrical one with a draw cord I'm sticking mine in a roll top X bed bag 
This way you can expel all the air, roll it down, it's waterproof, um, or it's watertight, as long as it's not submersed. So I was very pleased with this. breakfast on in a minute. Uh, I don't really want to leave my kit set up here just because I have a path. Um, put it this way, when people walk past I can see them. Probably around about 50 metres mark from this point. Although if I just walk over there, there's a bend in the path that comes towards this area. And uh, I don't know whether this tarp will stand out or not, but I know an orange mat hanging off the ridge line will from the other side. So I want to pretty much get it all packed away. And, uh, got the jet ball and food and stuff like that. Again, I was talking about being organised. So I've got my jet boil, which everything with the jet boil, which you'll see there. That's the jet boil flash. You'll see we got the stand here, gas canister stand, the gas canister, the stove itself, and then the pot, and then the hanging kit. All that goes inside, which doesn't take up much room. Uh, it's the same size as a Nalgene one litre water bottle, uh, obviously with the top squared off. For my pots, this is what I've got. Uh, it's the cozies that take up more of the room. Uh, it makes it look bigger. So I've got my cup, with a cosy on. Inside the top I've got the lid. This is the one that goes on the top. It's like the little stack of dolls. And I've got my titanium pot with a cosy on. And then again the lid in the top which goes over the top. Um, so essentially I've got two pots one I can drink out of, one I can eat in, vice versa. Titanium weighs nothing, and the pot is super lightweight. I've had it for years, but didn't really put it to good use, just because all the other pots I've been getting to test out. Um, but for the, the tubberware, this fantastic eating pot, drinking cup, just a click and click lid. Yeah, it's again totally watertight. It's got the little rubber ring there that compresses down, yeah, it seals it up, and I've kept drinks in there for hours in my bag. Also, I kept a coffee in this with the lid on, a cozy on the top, uh, for an hour in my bag and it was still hot, not boiling hot, not from when I first did it, but it was still hot, and that's how well this stuff works. Um, it's superb for that kind of thing. Food-wise, uh, I took everything out of my Snug Pack response pack. Uh, for my day kit for the winter, I've got a few other things. I also stuck an M kettle in there, because I've got two. Um, M kettle, water bottle with water in, so I've got two lots of water, food in there. I've got uh, my yak tracks for my boots in case it snows or ices up. Um, just simple stuff like that that's in there, and it's all in my Maxpedition Roly Poly Extreme rucksack. Um, it's easy, just grab. I've got it in my cupboard ready to go if I need to be uh, need to go out, and I haven't got much time to pack. I've got loads of kits like this, and that's what this was essentially before. Now, 
I've just got it as my food and brew kit. So in the side, got a bag of sugar, bag of whitener, and some coffee. I've got these for coffee lovers. That's the stuff. This is the stuff of magic. Also got good old English tea. Now, I very rarely drink it, but if my wife comes out, then we've got tea for her. On this side, we got chocolate bar, flapjacks, um, crackers, snacky bits. In the front, we got electrolyte mixes, cup of soup, the instant Heinz squirty tube of soup, got some flavoured oxo cubes, some boiled sweets, and I have got some instant three in one coffee as well. Ah, got some hot chocolate there. Always carry hot chocolate, but never seem to drink it. Just in case, I might fancy something different. In the main thing here, I've got two, like my fire sporks. I've broke plenty of these now to know to carry two. Um, I've got the rest of my pasta. jet boil pan support uh, which I can use my MSR Titan kettle on that also keep the spare gas canister that's on my bag down there in here I've got my MSR pocket rocket so I've got two stoves again this don't weigh nothing so because it don't take up much space I'd rather carry it so I've got it to use can do two things at once then. Um, I've got salami, a wind break, porridge, couscous, one of these MX free meals. Superb eating these. Um, and although this does go in the jet ball, coffee press. I've uh, just taken it out, kept it in here because I haven't got no coffee with me. I drank it all yesterday. Yeah, yeah so I just organised all my food into one grab pouch. Again, when you're wearing gloves, you not be fiddling around in your rucksack to get all these different bits you need. I just want to get it in a grab bag. Pull it all out, grab the jet ball out, grab my pots if I need them, and uh, just do everything like that. Because at the moment my hands, fingers are frozen. Uh, get them hand warmers back out of my pocket. Yeah, just organisation.